I feel like I have emerged as an entirely different woman than I was when I entered this really unbelievable and difficult journey. Going through a family album while I was sick and running across a picture of myself as a little girl and looking at that little girl and what I could see in that picture beyond this, you know, sweet little innocent kid with breasts and ovaries, cancer in the making. And that's a very sad image for me. So when I see my baby pictures and my, my childhood pictures now, what I see is a little girl who is going to grow up into this woman and be a two-time cancer survivor. Courage is my favorite word. I have my courage stone that has been stamped with the word in it. And I pasted the word courage up on a wall in more than one place. Meaning of life for me really is courage and risk. If you don't have courage and won't take a risk, then you'll never truly live. When I was 28, I found a breast lump. My mother had just died of ovarian cancer, and I was told I was too young for breast cancer. So much to everyone's shock, I turned out to have breast cancer with two nodes involved, which meant I needed to have chemotherapy. It's difficult for me when someone will say, well, I don't think you should be taking these treatments. Look at the way you're vomiting. Obviously, you have a dreadful reaction, but it is a short-term type of illness. And the payoff, hopefully, is much greater than the hours of discomfort that I experience. I can never go back to who I was before. It's impossible. I will never be able to live my life in a more innocent way. That innocence is gone. People will say, well, you know, I could be dead tomorrow. I could get hit by a car. That is true. I could also get hit by a car tomorrow. But there's something very different for a human being when they cross over and they know this is what they're likely going to die of. And they understand once they have metastatic disease what that really means in the big picture of life. I was 28 years old in 1983 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer and vital. I, I did the same thing. I founded Vital Options originally as the first organization in the country for young adults with cancer. Interesting. As I evaluate the quality of my life, I feel good that I've done so much. I haven't had a frivolous life. I haven't had as many holidays as I would have liked to have had. Um, I didn't get to marry and have children. And yet the founding of my organization at such a young age, in my 20s, that Vital Options, through my experience, was able to be a pioneering force on behalf of young adults with cancer. And now that movement is absolutely huge and dynamic, and it's fantastic. I decided ultimately that I was ready to go and have my ovaries removed. I went to sleep thinking I'd wake up and my risk for ovarian cancer would be eliminated. However, things didn't go exactly the way the surgeon would have anticipated. And upon opening up my ovary, they discovered that the malignancy was already there. I'd missed a lot. It's not so much the material things, it's I didn't know how to achieve balance in my life. You know, when you're young and you lose your parent and then you take on a cause, we all know what it is like to be young and take on a cause. But I think the cause also consumed me. And as a result of that, I didn't integrate the balance that was needed. And so I missed out on a relationship at a young age that could have led to the creation of my own family. When I think about the fact that I didn't have kids, realizing I didn't risk passing on this BRCA mutation, that's a good thing. 
so I guess in some way I created or I birthed an organization. Cancer has certainly taught me what a strong and powerful person I am. You know, I thought I was a woman warrior with a scar on my breast, but now I certainly have more than one scar. And I will be reminded daily. I, I, I still think I'm in a complete shock that I've, I've been through this. It's amazing. The life of a cancer survivor doesn't end with treatment. You carry it, you integrate the experience, and you learn to live your life but it forever colors your life and your perspective and your decisions and, and choices and thoughts. When you ask what the meaning of life or my life is, I, I don't know if I know the answer to that. I, I know that for me, the fact that my life has had meaning, that my life that I served, that I didn't live a selfish life, that I, that I made a difference, that I, that I can look back and know, boy, I worked hard. I accomplished something. I was trusted by other people. What a profound gift that other people believed enough in me and to earn someone's trust, I mean, to me, that's the ultimate. But I think what I'd really like to be remembered for is my courage, my perseverance, my passion, my humor. The palliative care. Okay. <laughs> you are rolling. Stop it. This is Salma Schimmel for the group room at the annual ASCO meeting with Dr. David Quinn. Well, I would just say thank you and I'll say you're a great interviewer so you bring out the best in me and thank you very much. Dr. Larry Norton, <laughs> Deputy Physician in Chief for Breast Cancer Programs, Medical Director, the Evelyn H. Lauder Breast Center, Norma S. Serotham Chair in Clinical Oncology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and I but just need to make a correction, is it Norna or Norma? Yeah, no Norna S. Serotham. 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 Serofim. 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 Right. Nor Norna S. Serofim Chair in Clinical Oncology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Did I nail it? Yeah, very good. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Pa Paolo Casali. Right. Dr. Paolo Casali. One more time. Paolo. Paolo. Paolo Casali. Casali. Kazali. 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 Dr. Paolo Kazali. Dr. Paolo Kazali. Great. Hold that thought and pull your blouse over. Okay, and you know what? Thank you. I, I, I also need you, I'm sorry, I need you to pull your jacket. It's your left shoulder. Um, like sit on it, pull it down, because yes, it's just, my thing was open, your shoulder was up, well, we're off to just a... Something we have different in mind then. And everything is open suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> You're too comfortable, I guess. You're only human, so. Boy, this is Selma Schnell in one pissed off mood. <laughs> I'd like to be remembered for opening communication between doctors and patients and other medical professionals to try to put us more on a level playing field for the exchange of information, for empowering patients to seek information and to helping doctors find a way to communicate information more effectively yeah, I'd like to be remembered for having the guts to do things that people hadn't done before when I was told, you can't talk about cancer on the air. Radio is a entertainment medium. That would be death radio. Or the courage when people said when 
September 08 came and funding was really, really tough and it was really hard to keep vital options afloat. And all the times people said, just close it down. You've done enough charity work. You've done enough in the nonprofit. It's enough. And I said, no, no, we can do this. We're going to move into video. We can do this. And, and we did. I'd like to be remembered for courage and guts. This is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is The Group Room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Amy Abernathy, Tracy Balboni, Marsha Bros, Eduardo Barrera, Winston Chung, Gregory Daniels, Stefan Gluck, Jonathan Goldman, Clifford Huddis, Patrick Hugh, Mario Lacatur, Heinz Joseph Lenz, Benjamin Levy, Joan Mortimer, Larry Norton, <laughs> David Quinn, Lydia Shapira, Sonali Smith, Thomas Smith, Anil Sood, Howard Strickler, Jeffrey Ward, Julie Graylo, Kent Osborne, Edith Perez, Martine Picard, Hope Rugo. Thank you all. We could do a lot longer. 